Hi guys, this is Miss Sims. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the World War II notes part two. Um, this is called the home front, which means what's going on um, in the United States while the war is going on. So this is really more um, what our focus is supposed to be um, as eighth grade um, looking at the U.S. So um, we will kind of flip back and look at like the fighting in Europe. Um, but for now, we kind of are going to focus on what's going on in the United States. Okay, you guys remember the last thing that we left off with um, was Pearl Harbor. So um, we talked about the Great Depression, we talked about the Depression globally, and we talked about that there were these totalitarian leaders that were rising up in the Soviet Union, in Japan, um, in Germany, in Italy, and that they um, offered different things. Um, so they said things like, I can save you. Our country will be great again. Um, this is not our fault. This is the fault of someone else. So in Germany, they blame the Jews. Um, in Japan, they blame the Chinese. Um, in Italy, they would blame th certain things on um, North African people. Um, kind of going that way. Um, Soviet Union also put a lot of blame on Jews um, as well. Um, so anyways, things escalated both. Um, all of these groups started expanding and eventually we got to a point um, where Great Britain and France had declared war um, and then Japan is going to attack Pearl Harbor, um, which I want you guys to keep in mind. Pearl Harbor is in Hawaii. Um, it is a naval base, so it was a very important um, naval, like military spot for us. Um, it is not a state; it is a territory. So um, at that time, it was seen slightly different. It was more concerning that it was a naval base than the fact that like it's American soil, because technically it is American soil. Um, but you got you guys might remember when we. We talked about imperialism um, that we've really not had Pearl Harbor for that long um, and different people view it in different ways so anyways um, okay that's enough review so we're gonna focus on um, the home front all right, so you're going to see a lot of propaganda posters um, and every country was doing this to a certain extent um, and the way that this is really important in democracies because the way that the American people are going to view the war is going to impact the way that it is fought. Um, and we'll talk about some of this kind of as we go on. OK, um, there's a lot of uh, comics that are going to be used. Um, one particular um, artist that's going to become very popular during this time. His name is going to be Dr. Seuss. Um, so a lot of you guys know Dr. Seuss as um, Cat in the Hat, um, Green Eggs and Ham, writing children's book books, but um, he is actually of German descent, um, and I believe he is Jewish, um, and so he was very, very critical of Hitler, um, and so a lot of his stories, um, if you guys go back and you look at the um, story Yertle the Turtle, um, it is about um, basically a dictator, and it was a direct commentary on Adolf Hitler, okay? Um, so Anyways, that's something that is kind of interesting to go back and look at. Again, that's Yertle the Turtle. If you want to look that up online, um, you can see there's a, there's a ton of connections, ton of connections to um, Nazi Germany. Okay. All right. So the economy. Um, the first thing is is that the U.S. economy needs to make a big shift. They need to shift from um, making toothpaste to making bullets. They need to shift from um, making Campbell soup to making K rations, which are going to be, um, like the packed food that soldiers need. Um, they need to transition to, um, uh, making, um, weapons and ammunition and, um, uniforms, things like that. Okay. That is not unlike today, um, where we are trying to change our economy, um, to make things that we need right now for, um, the COVID-19 crisis. Okay. So there's been a shift to, we need to focus on making like PPE. So, um, masks and gloves and gowns, um, those kind of things, ventilators, uh, making 
things that are going to help people that are on the front lines um, rather than making just things that we just want to buy for fun. Okay. Um, so that is something that you guys should understand that that's something that's kind of happening now. Um, there's a lot more focus on things like making hand sanitizer or making Clorox wipes, things that are going to help with this crisis. Um, also the economy right now in 2020, um, is ramping up to produce a vaccine. There isn't even a vaccine that's been made yet um, that's been fully tested, but um, the people who make vaccines, they are ready so that whenever that vaccine is ready, they can make it as quick as they can. Um, so that is similar, um, shifting the goods that you're making um, to be prepared for the crisis at hand. So the crisis at hand um, in 41 is going to be um, the war. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of different groups that are going to like make this happen in the United States. So one is going to be called the Reconstruction Finance Corps. Um, they are going to give loans to help companies convert um, into these things. So there's a lot of factories during this time period that already have a lot of heavy machinery, but they're set up for um, making like cars for fun, not like military Jeeps. And so um, they're going to need to do some, some slight changes and this is going to help them. Um, like I said, the auto industry is going to easily convert um, in the beginning of the United States fighting. Um, having these military vehicles is going to be um, very, very, very important. Um, moving people, moving ammunition, very, very, very important. Okay. Also, you're going to have another group that's called the War Production Board, and they're going to say, um, what is the priority? They're going to say, this is our production goal. This is our um, distribution of supplies. Who gets what? Um, they're going to, like, the company doesn't get to say, like, oh, I think I would like to make grenades today. Um, no, they say, you're going to make this, and we need this many by the end of the month. Um, or we need this many by the end of the week. Um, and most companies are going to go along with that. And you're going to see that that is because um, people believed that we needed to fight this war. People believed that um, the Germans and particularly the Japanese um, and the Italians are the bad guys and they need to be defeated. Okay. And so they believe that the United States needed to win this together um, to help Europe um, kind of step out of the shadow of um, evil Germany and evil Japan. And that was really the way that they viewed um, the war. Okay, again, that is not unlike um, there are campaigns today that you guys see on Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook um, that with the little stickers that say, stay at home. Um, people have made it um, uncool to go out and do things that you're not supposed to do that break social distancing um, rules. And so that is a similar form of um, propaganda. It's a, a lot of us see it as a positive thing. Um, propaganda doesn't always have to be um, a really negative thing. Um, it's getting people on the side willing to make sacrifices um, for the better good. Now, what is the better good? That's going to be argued over um, over time. Okay, um, the National War Labor Board is going to focus on um, helping businesses find the workers that they need because you need to understand that a lot of the workers that worked in these factories, now they've been drafted or they have volunteered to go and fight in Europe. So they don't have these trained um, machinists that they used to have. Um, also, these um, business owners aren't necessarily wanting to hire women or African Americans, um, and those are the people that want the jobs. Those are the people that are available for the jobs, um, and so there's got to be a connect making that happen, um, and it will. It will end up happening, okay? All right, again, we talked a little bit about propaganda. Um, this is two examples of propaganda. Um, so they would use a lot of symbolism. Um, so um, the swastika is what you guys see here on the top left. Um, that was a sign of Nazi Germany. And so they're going to use that. They're going to say, like, don't let the shadow touch them, talking about the innocent children. Um, shadow, we always see that as darkness. That's a bad thing. Um, we don't want that evil to taint the children. Um, and then you're also going to see on the right side, um, this is another um, 
another poster that's going to depict um, Nazi Germany on the right and then um, Japan on the left. Um, you're going to see um, the way that the Japanese are going to be portrayed is extremely racist. Um, they're going to be viewed as subhuman. Okay, so you're going to see this in the way that their mouths or their eyes are going to be portrayed. Um, sometimes they draw them with really long fingernails. Um, so that is always something to look forward to look at. Um, so um, the, they don't do that as much with the Germans because um, a lot of Americans have German descent. Um, and again, that is racism that even though the Germans are our enemy, um, they're still white. Okay. Um, and so that is definitely going to be something that um, definitely look for, look at. Okay. All right. So um, the draft is called the Selective Service Act. Um, so that is going to be uh, part of the way that the United States gets a lot of its, um, they call them GIs, that means government issue. That's going to be the nickname for the American soldiers. Um, so if you hear me say GIs, I mean American soldiers. Uh, a lot of people um, are drafted um, and a lot of people are going to sign up and volunteer. So you're going to see both happen, okay? All right, so there's going to be um, the African American community is going to be able to make a lot of progress um, during this time period. And we already talked about one way was that African Americans were filling those factory jobs that other uh, like white male soldiers um, had left empty whenever they had gone. So that's going to be part of it. But we're also going to see that a lot of African Americans are going to go um, and fight. And so a lot of um, during this time period and after World War II, um, a lot of um, civil rights leaders are going to say, we fought for our country. Now we need our country to fight for us or our country to at least treat us um, like full citizens. OK, and so one of the campaigns was called the double V campaign. So V was used a lot. If you look at pictures of um, so FDR does it some. Um, Winston Churchill does it a whole lot. He's a prime minister of Great Britain at the time. He does the peace signs. And a lot of times we think of that as like, oh, peace. Like he's saying he wants peace. That's not what he's doing with that. It's a V. He's making a V with his fingers. Um, and it's a V for victory. Okay. And so one of these campaigns was called the double V campaign. It was victory against um, racism and evil abroad. So talking about um, Germany, because Germany was having a very racist campaign um, against um, the Jewish people um, and against other people like the Roma people. Those are people that um, would, to, some people know them as gypsies rather than Roma. Um, Roma is the uh, more politically correct, the kinder name. Um, so anyways, this double V campaign, the first V is victory against racism abroad. So in, like in Germany um, and in uh Japan. And the other one is victory against racism in the United States at home. Um, so um, we talked about um, lynching and those kinds of things that are going on in the American South um, and even in the North to a certain extent. Um, those don't just go away because of the war. OK, so um, again, the black community is going to use um, this to put pressure on FDR to say like, hey, we're risking our lives for the United States. Um, the United States should stop treating us like crap. Um, and one of the specific ways that um, African-Americans are going to push against that is um, most African-Americans in the South do not have the right to vote. So legally, federally, they have the right to vote. Um, but the states have passed laws that keep African-Americans from having the right to vote. Um, poll taxes, um, literacy tests, um, grandfather clauses, all of those things. We talked about that earlier. Um, all of those are going to make it very, very difficult for African Americans to vote. And again, we're going to talk more about this whenever we um, focus in on the civil rights movement um, in the 60s. The civil rights movement, it doesn't just happen in the 60s. It really starts, um, well, it really starts the minute that slavery starts, um, but it starts in the early 1900s. So we'll kind of backpedal and pick up where we left off um, later. Okay. Anyways, um, another type of prejudice that is going to be fought is um, women are going to really fight against prejudice. So women are going to serve in the military in different ways. Um, so they're not able to fight in combat positions, um, but they're going to fight in uh, like the women's army corps. So they're going to do a lot of um, 
the desk work. They're going to do um, a lot of the nursing. They're going to do um, a lot of assembling and preparing planes, different things like that. Um, and so there's several different groups. Um, WAC is one group, Women's Army Corps. Um, and you're going to see there's a lot of different other. Waves was another one. Um, okay, this is another uh, Rosie the Riveter. This is a super important image. You need to know this is from World War II. Most people do. It's very popular. Um, just kind of an iconic cultural image today. Um, so her name is Rosie the Riveter. A riveter is someone who um, put rivets, so they're metal rivets. That's how you um, attach two pieces of metal together. Um, and these are people that were assembling um, like ships, like big metal ships and also um, airplanes. Um, they were putting bombs together, things like that. And so um, we can do it. It's just this idea um, that women can do very difficult, strong things. Um, and they are. Um, and really, there was a ton of prejudice against women during this time period, but the people who um, continue to have prejudice against women, they can't really say anything right now because most of the men are gone. And so these jobs still have to be filled for the war effort to continue. Um, and really, women and African Americans are the only ones that are there um, to fill those jobs. Uh, there's going to be other groups. So there are some like Italian immigrants that are going to experience quite a lot of discrimination, um, Latino and Latina immigrants that are going to experience a lot of, um, a lot of um, prejudice against them as well. Um, but we're going to see that there isn't really a whole lot of option. And so this is kind of a moment to take advantage of that. Okay. All right. Again, like I said, um, there's a lot of propaganda to try to recruit women um, to get a job and to help. And this is a completely like different change. This is a 180, a complete shift from, um, the way that culture had been going as far as like, basically the idea was that women should just get married and have children and not work. And, and now that's starting to shift. Okay. All right. Um, and part of that shift is going to happen, um, all across the world, not just with the United States. Um, this arrow to the right, um, I don't know if any of you guys know who this woman is. Um, this is actually, uh, so it was Princess Elizabeth at the time. So now we know her as Queen Elizabeth. Um, she had participated um, in learning how to do mechanic things. And basically what it showed was that um, it was, if it's the duty of the heir of um, the crown of England to help and participate, um, then any other woman should also um, be doing that as well. Um, and they need to do their part. It is proper and it is their duty. Okay. Um, so that is something that we're going to see. Okay. All right. Again, if you look at all of these pictures, these are all female machinists that are working. Um, these women on the left are riveting or welding. Um, Either way, I'm not 100% sure. I can't tell by their um, what's in their hand, but their mask is going to show that they're either um, putting rivets in or they're welding. Um, so this is really heavy machinery. Um, this is going to do a lot to progress um, people's ideas about women. And then on the right, I believe that they're making uh, they're making uniforms. Um, again, very important, very crucial for the war effort to continue. Okay. All right. So Japanese Americans are going to suffer quite a lot during this time period. Okay. A lot of, um, Americans have suspicion that Japanese Americans, um, are actually spies for, um, Japan, um, and that they are going to cause problems. So what they do in the United States is they decide to reloc relocate Japanese American, um, to what are called internment camps. Okay. I want you to be careful. Um, one, this is awful and it's terrible and we're going to talk about that. Um, but this is not a concentration camp like a Jewish concentration camp. Okay. Um, these are not death camps. Okay. They are bad, like not good. Um, these Japanese Americans, um, in a lot of cases had to leave all of their property. So if they were business owners, they lost their businesses. Um, if they were homeowners, they lost their homes. Um, they could bring some stuff with them, but they could only bring what they could carry with them on a short um, notice. And so those things are really horrible. Um, and a lot of these Japanese Americans, what they're going to do is they're going to be um, relocated to uh, the middle of the country, to Colorado, um, to other areas um, that are not really set up for people to live. Like they were 
formerly um, fairgrounds, um, formerly barns that are going to be turned into places um, where they can live. Okay. And so these are not like nice places that they're being put. Okay. And these are American citizens. Like these are people who have rights. Um, and so eventually um, this was part of an executive order that FDR passed. Um, and so this is going to be a smudge on FDR's presidency. Um, and eventually people are going to go back and say, okay, this was a wrong move that we made. But at the time um, there wasn't a lot of people saying like, oh, we shouldn't do this. Okay, so eventually there are going to be court cases. The most popular one is Korematsu versus the United States. Um, and it basically, um, the Korematsu family um, said, you can't do this. I'm an American citizen. This is against my um, fundamental rights as Americans. And they weren't wrong, but the court still said it's okay because it's a time of war. Um, this is something that we have to do. Okay, um, so eventually once the war is over, the courts are going to go back and say like, oh, we really messed up. Um, but for the time period, this is a really kind of ugly part of American history um, in the way that the American government treated American citizens. OK. All right. Um, also, wage and price control. Um, so that's going to be something that the government is going to dictate um, how much businesses and companies can charge for things. Um, also, there's going to be rationing. The American American citizens are going to get basically they're like stamps and it's how much money or sorry, not money, how much meat, sugar or gas you can buy. So you still have to pay for this, but it basically just means like you can only buy so much. So um, there are lots of stories about people wanting to um like make a birthday cake for their child because it's their birthday um, and they have to trade around in the community different stamps, maybe trade meat stamps to get sugar or butter stamps um, so that they can make that or maybe they have to save up those stamps for a couple months in order to be able to make that. So this was a really hard time for a lot of people. It, people are making the sacrifice um, and the reason that they're doing this is because um, the meat production, the sugar, the gas, um, all of those, excuse me, all of those goods are needed abroad. Um, and so the point is that American citizens don't want to use all of this up um, doing frivolous things. They're also going to encourage Americans to, um, to grow their own vegetables so that all the vegetables that are being grown by industrial farmers can be sent overseas. Um, these are um, ration book covers you can see on the top. And so people would get these monthly. Oil ration is on the bottom right. Um, you can see on um, the bottom left, you can see the stamps for um, coffee and sugar. Um, you had to have this whenever you bought your stuff. So even if you had um, the money, you could not buy it. Now, of course, there was black market stuff. Um, but most people saw that as um, not doing their part. So people did participate in the black market, but they tried, a lot of people tried not to um, because they wanted to support the American cause. Okay. All right. Again, there's different campaigns at home. Um, so one is a victory garden. So that was an idea that people should grow their own vegetables um, to um, not take vegetables away from uh, the American troops. Um, one was scrap drive. So at this time, and you can do it even today, but it was um, a good way to make money back then, is people would go and they would get any kind of metal scrap and they would turn it in for money. Um, and basically these scrap drives, um, they would encourage people to turn in these scraps um, and the money would be donated to the American war effort. Um, another thing were war bonds. Um, they were encouraging, especially people who were too old to fight, um, was to basically buy war bonds, which would give the American um, government money and they could get that money back um, like way later after the war is over. So basically it's the American government borrowing money from the American people, um, but the American people had to volunteer to do that. Okay, so that's war bonds. All right, again, this is a look at propaganda, um, kind of pointing out some different symbols. Um, so at the bottom, it says, um, buy victory bonds. This is going to be really reminiscent of the style of um, propaganda posters from World War I. And it's making people nostalgic for, um, okay, 
the American people have come together with Europe to fight um, off the Germans before. We can do this again. Um, we won last time. We can do this again. Okay. Um, so that was intentional there. Um, you also see um, these evil claw hands, and they've got the symbol of Nazi Germany and the symbol of imperialist Japan um, right here. That's what this is. If, so if you look at... Um, if you look at a flag of Japan, it's white and it has the red circle in the middle. Um, this sun kind of burst out. That is another kind of flag uh, that was for imperialist Japan. They're both still um, the Japanese flag, but that was the one that you're going to see. Um, and then you've got this sweet little innocent baby and this sweet little innocent. Um, you're always going to notice a white woman, um, usually blonde, um, to trying to protect our child from these evil um, the Nazis and the Japanese. Again, propaganda, trying to encourage people to support the war effort. Okay. Um, there were also things to, um, cause Americans, um, specifically American women and African Americans were working in factories. And so they knew information about, um, how many bombs were being produced and things like that. And so, um, one of the things was careless talk, costs lives. Um, another one was loose lips sink ships. Um, and so um, basically this idea is that even like careless gossip about what you're doing at work, um, if there's a spy around, um, that could um, be death for American soldiers. Okay. And that's why this says wanted for murder. Um, also, you never know who is a spy. Um, that kind of thing was also part of the propaganda um, movement. Okay. Uh, also, there were um, like rationing for um, for gasoline. So this was one that says, "When you ride alone, you ride with Hitler." Basically, by not by not car sharing, um, you're wasting fuel, and that is helping um, the Germans. So again, these are all some of the same things. Again, loose lips might sink ships. Um, this idea that um, any valuable information could get out to the wrong person, even if you think it's just gossip, um, and it could mean life or death for um, American soldiers. Okay. Um, all right. So we're going to kind of close this down. And again, we'll go back and we'll talk about what's going on in Europe um, on Friday. Uh, but things start to close down. So the big three during this time period, um, eventually, whenever Germany attacks um, the Soviet Union, Stalin, so that's him right here. He is the dictator in the Soviet Union. He is going to flip on Hitler because Hitler flipped on him and he is going to join the allies. Um, and so our big three is FDR, who's in the middle right here. This is our president of the United States. Churchill, who is the prime minister of Great Britain. Um, there's been a lot of movies recently made about Churchill. Um, he is a very exciting historical figure. Um, he was a very emotional man who was very good at giving speeches that um, kind of rallied the, uh, the British people. And we're going to see in turn on um, the American and the French um, people. So those are the big three. So these are the big three leaders for the allies. Um, they're going to meet at Yalta, which is a conference um, to talk about post-war plans. Um, and the U S is going to ask the USSR to join the fight against Japan. Cause at the, that point, the United States had really been doing a lot of it, um, not by themselves. Australians have been helping. So Australians were fighting for the British. Um, they were helping as well. Um, but they're asking for some help there. Okay. So VE Day, this was in your vocab. VE Day is going to be May 8, 1945. This is going to be victory in Europe. That's what this picture is right here. Um, we'll get to how we get there later, but anyways. All right. Um, so at the end, Victory in Europe Day has happened, so the um, the Germans have been defeated. And again, we'll talk about those battles a little bit more later. Um, but the Japanese are holding on. Um, so the United States turns a lot of its focus, and we had been fighting in the Pacific the whole time. Um, we just like to talk a lot more about Germany. Um, again, some of that has to do with racism. Um, so anyways... Um, the war effort in um, the U.S., there's a focus to end the war quickly. 
Um, and so the atomic bomb is going to be um, the American solution there. Um, at this point, FDR has died um, and his vice president, Truman, becomes president. And when Truman becomes president, he didn't even know about the atomic bomb um, and it had been created and it was ready to go. Um, so this shows you um, it's kind of interesting to think that the man who decided to drop the atomic bomb, Truman, um, didn't even know it existed like two months before. So um, if we have time, we'll talk about some of that later. Um, there's two bombs dropped. So one is dropped on August 6th. This one was called Little Boy. It was dropped by the Enola Gay, which is the name of the plane. It was dropped on Hiroshima. Some people call it Hiroshima. Some people call it Hiroshima. Um, I've gotten to go there. So if I get a chance, I'll um, try to bring up some of those pictures uh, maybe later um, on another day. Um, and then three days later, Japan's not surrendered. And so they drop another bomb um, on Nagasaki. It was called Fat Man. Um, and it was dropped again on August 9th. The United States had planned to drop several more bombs. Basically, they would drop a bomb, wait a couple days. If they didn't surrender, drop another bomb. Um, they had mapped out like I can't remember. It's either six or nine cities that they had already decided, okay, these are where we're going to drop bombs. Okay. Um, after two, Japan surrenders. It's called VJ Day. So it's Victory in Japan Day. Um, and that's August 15th. Um, shortly after that, kind of closing out the war um, in Germ back focusing on Germany, there's going to be what's called the Nuremberg Trials. And these are international military tribunal. And this is where these Nazi leaders are going to be tried for war crimes. Um, and it's very public. This is part of the way um, that Germany is uh, going to heal is by making these very public to show um, the atrocities that have happened in Europe that the Nazi party has done. Um, and again, we'll talk about some of this a little bit later. Okay. All right. So that is where we're going to stop. Um, next time we'll talk about specific battles more. Um, but this kind of gave you an overview of kind of what was going on um, with that. All right. Let me stop it. Sorry, guys. My computer shut slow.